Is there something wrong with your bolt? Have you started to notice that those settings you created two months ago don't work anymore? You can't cut through like you used to? You start scratching your head and you're thinking there's got to be something wrong with the machine. There isn't. You would be shocked at the big difference less than a millimeter will make. Stick around today on LaserNug. Back when I was researching lasers, before I purchased the bolt, one of the big considerations for me was maintenance. One of the big check marks for me on the bolt, very little maintenance, very little maintenance. However, you gotta do it. Being new to lasers like most of you folks, I didn't understand the critical importance of having a clean alignment on that laser beam. So for whatever reason, over the last two and a half months, I started to find that the settings that I had perfected for say, quarter inch Baltic birch or one eighth Baltic birch, uh, my powder coated tumblers, so many different things weren't working anymore. The power settings I was using to cut through the Baltic birch wouldn't cut through. I had to keep upping the power. And I started to think there had to be something wrong with the machine, and it's not. It's called mirror alignment. And for whatever reason, perhaps in transport, maybe I've banged the machine or done something while I've had it here the last few months, but for some reason my mirrors went out of alignment. So after some great support from Thunder Laser Canada and from Thunder Laser themselves, they suggested I run an alignment test. And I did. It's super simple. It just takes a little bit of time. After I did, my alignment seemed to be reasonably okay to me. So they took a look at my results and they identified that two of my test positions were too much out of alignment. I took a few minutes, did my alignment, and then re-ran my cuts, and everything was back to normal again. I did not realize the importance of having an exact alignment, but that tiny little fraction of a millimeter made all the difference. I don't think it'd be helpful if I tried to walk you through the whole alignment process, because there's two really good videos that I think will help you. Like anything you do the first time, you might be a little hesitant as I was, but once you start to do it, you realize that it's it's reasonably simple, it just takes about 40-45 minutes if you're doing it as slow as I did. But I will leave a link to Thunder Laser USA's support video, as well as Thunder Laser's support video. You may find that Chris and Thunder Laser USA uses, I believe, a Nova, but the mirror mechanisms are virtually the same. So by watching his video, you'll have a good understanding of what you need to do with the bolt. And by watching Thunder Laser's video, which is also linked below, that'll kind of hopefully close the second part of the gap. It did for me. And once I started on that first mirror, you kind of get a feel for it. It's actually very simple. However, what I will do today is I will give you a couple of tips that I learned going through the process a couple of times. Take a look. I apologize for the lighting in case you can't see it very clearly, so I'll walk you through. But one of the other benefits or features of this bolt, unlike some other lasers, is that your pulse test to do your alignment is built right into your menu. If you click on menu and you look through your menu, you're going to see alignment. You're going to click on alignment and you're going to see that there are five positions already predetermined for you across your honeycomb because this is the bed of your honeycomb. You're going to see the word pulse. You're going to see pulse time and red dot pointer. And you're going to see it's got a default power setting. And at a high level, all you're doing here is you're going to put masking tape over the hole on the left side of your laser head, which allows the beam to come through and hit the mirror. You're going to send your laser to the upper left. You're going to pulse energy through it so you can get a hole in that masking tape. And then you're going to move it to the upper right. Do the same thing. Move it to the center. Do the same thing. Move it to the bottom right. Do the same thing. Bottom left. Do the same thing. Two things I would offer just as tips. You can leave the red dot pointer on or checked or you can take it off because it just doesn't show you the red dot pointer. However, this pulse time is preset, again defaulted. In this case, it's 70 milliseconds. What I found when I first started to do my alignment is when I kept trying to pulse it, it wasn't burning my masking tape. And so I kept playing with these settings. And the interesting irony is that I started in the bottom right to do my first pulse test, and I'll get to that in a second, and these settings would not burn through the masking tape. So I took it off and put it manually and started turning up the pulse time and turning up the power. And then I eventually got a hole burned through it. All was good. When I clicked on upper left and I moved the laser to the left end top corner of the, the honeycomb and I pressed it again, the tape caught fire. Because the important tip here 
is when you're going to pulse, don't hold the button down for long periods of time. You want to hit it and let go of it and then hit it and let go of it if it didn't get through the tape. Don't press it and hold it because while you're holding it, the beam continues to come out. Masking tape catches fire pretty easy. After the third time it caught fire, I realized I was out of alignment because the power setting I was getting at the bottom right corner of the honeycomb bed was clearly much less than at the top left. That was a big indication that I had a power issue, which means I had an alignment issue with my mirrors. I just didn't know which mirror yet. So the key tips here, if you're going to pulse, pulse and let go. Don't hold the button. And if that masking tape does catch fire, I'm not providing you formal advice, but in my opinion, don't go running for the fire extinguisher. Just lift the door and blow hard on the tape. It goes out right away. So now you've ended up with five different test results that correspond with the positions on the honeycomb, and you've got tiny little burn marks in each one of these pieces of masking tape. Now you need to measure it. So how am I going to measure it? Well, when you put your masking tape over the hole, just take a minute, use your fingernail, and just try to grind around the hole or the circumference of the hole because you want it to make an impression on the tape. That way when you take the tape off to measure it, you actually have a reference to measure it from. You may not be able to see it, but there's an indent around the tape. I'm going to run my pulse test in this position, and when I'm done, I'm going to pull that tape off. What that does for me is I now have the circumference of the circle, and after I've run my test, I'll have a burn mark. So how do I know if it's in the center? Well, I used my handy set of calipers. I know, after measuring the inside of this hole, that it is exactly 0.644 millimeters in diameter, which means that my hole should be 0.32 millimeters from anywhere measured from the outside circumference of the circle on the tape. So I rest my tape, I can see the outline of the circle, and I can see the burn mark. I take my calipers, and I should be able to see it at 0.322 millimeters from any point around the circumference of that ring. That's how I can tell whether the beam is aligned or not. So I imagine you may have other ways to, to achieve the same thing. For me, that seemed like a pretty straight up, simple way of doing it. The importance, and I guess the takeaway from all this, is that if that burn mark is not directly in the center of your opening, that circular imprint on your tape, you're going to lose power. And the further out of alignment it is, the more power you'll lose. It's not the laser. You just need to adjust the mirrors. And the last tip I can offer to you that I learned doing the alignment, don't get fooled by the red laser dot. That actually is irrelevant to the alignment of your laser beam. So try not to use the dot to determine that if the burn is where the dot is, everything's okay. Because that's what I did the first time. I kind of figured that if the laser is burning in the exact same place as the red pointer dot, everything should be okay. They're mutually exclusive from each other. And you'll learn that as you get into the combining mirror in the back of this machine. The red laser dot is a guide for you, but it really has nothing to do with the alignment of the laser beam itself. You kind of forget about the red laser dot, don't pay attention to it, work on the beam. And then if you find that after you've got clean adjustment on your beam, if your laser dot is not lined up to the burn mark, then a very simple adjustment on the combining lens in the back will align your red dot to where the beam blows. I hope that was helpful. Again, if you haven't done it yet, I found those two videos that I'm gonna link down in the description to be really helpful in how to do the alignment. And I'm pretty sure you'll feel very confident after you watch those videos that you can do it yourself. Cleaning the mirrors and the lens. Super important to clean it regularly. And depending on how much you're using your laser, clean them every morning before you start. Take these little swabs they gave you, and depending on where you live, you will or will not have received these little alcohol towelettes. If you didn't get these, then isopropyl alcohol is what you want to use in order to clean the mirrors. And you don't want the 70% stuff, you want the 99% stuff. Very important.
much better. A couple of tips. <laughs> if you're like me, you try to, you know, stretch things before you throw them out. In the manual, it'll tell you not to reuse your swabs or your wipes on multiple mirrors. Use one on every mirror. And at first I was thinking, well, it doesn't look that dirty. So I tried using it on multiple mirrors just to, you know, save a swab or two. And what you'll find if you hold it up to the light is you'll see a haze across the top of the mirror or the lens. And that's because even though you can't see the dirt because it's so finite, it's in there. So I'd recommend you just use one swab on every mirror. And as far as the towelette goes, if you can kind of keep it separated, you're probably good for two mirrors with it. But I wouldn't use one on everything unless you've held it up and you don't see any type of a haze or a film. And I also understand that if there are particles embedded in there and you're scratching it across the mirror or the lens, it's eventually going to scratch it. And cleaning the mirrors is pretty simple. You just got to undo this gold screw, pull out the mirror, give it a good clean, make sure it's dry, hold it up to the light, make sure you don't have a haze on it, stick it back in, and then firm up that gold screw again. And I just caution, these are machine screws. You don't want to reef them on really tight. You just want to firm that with kind of some finger pressure. That's all you need to hold it in place. But here's my big tip for you. The reason I understand that it's so critically important to keep that lens clean all the time is because when the lens is clean, the energy beam or the laser beam goes through it, hits your material and does its job, cutting or engraving. While you're engraving and cutting materials, especially things like MDF, there's a lot of stuff going on in there coming off of the material. And you've found that it kind of layers around the surface on the inside of the bolt, but it also eventually starts to pile up on this lens. So when your beam of energy is going through the lens and it's clean, little to no heat is generated. But when you start to get a layer of residue or dust or wood material or MDF or powder coat, it slowly starts to layer on that lens. And when the beam of energy is going through the lens, it now has material there, which in my own words, it starts to burn that material because it's material. And now it begins to create heat on the lens and eventually your lens will crack. So you want to keep it nice and clean. You also want to clean the inside of your cabinet and primarily you want the rails on the gantry and the side rails for the Y axis clean. You'll be able to tell that you're getting a lot of dust in there because these black rubber wheels will start to become white or brownish because it's picking up soot from inside the channel. It's my understanding that you do not use lubricant on these rails. I simply just use one of the alcohol wipes and I'll clean off the rails as well as my little rubber wheels. The key is I don't think you want to put any type of lubricant or oil in here because that's just going to attract dirt and then it's going to make it twice as bad. By all means, check to see what they say in your manual, but I'm pretty sure they'll tell you the same thing. A couple of folks have mentioned how clean the inside of my bolt looks. Well, it's not because it doesn't get dirty. It's because I clean it regularly. It's just steel with powder coat. So for me, I just use this Windex multi-purpose cleaner. Same stuff I use in the house. I don't think it's going to hurt it at all and I make sure I clean out the inside of the cabinet. Also really important to clean out these grates that you see in the back. I understand that's what helps to create the airflow in to suck out all of the dust and things out of the cabinet in through the exhaust fan. Those are your exhaust grates, I believe. So it's kind of important to keep this clean and especially if you start to see buildup starting to block these grates, you want to clean that out. This is what it looks like after you give it a wipe. It's kind of beneficial that the inside of this cabinet is white because you'll start to see it yellow when it starts to get really filthy. And after you give it a wipe, she comes up all nice and clean again. You also want to make sure you're cleaning out this foam filter for your air cooling fans. And remember when you grab your air compressor, I don't think you need to blow it out at like 100 PSI. I set it around 2025. If you're following the manual, it'll tell you to undo these four screws and take the filter out and clean it separately. But usually one of the first things I do is I clean it. That way I've got some dust going on. I can blow out the back here as well to keep that dust away from the components and keep them clean. And you also want to make sure that your fan to the left side here is all clean of dust and different debris. Also, don't forget every once in a while, you need to undo the bands off of the sides of this exhaust fan 
and get in there with a rag and clean out all the dust that you're going to find that's going to be settled and stuck to those plastic blades that are going around. I've only done this twice. I do it about once a month. It's pretty simple to do. It's also in your manual. Just loosen up these bolts here. You'll find that these bands actually hold each of the in and the out hoses onto either side of the fan itself. Just take them off and then that will expose the fan blades and you can get in there with a rag, clean all of the dust and resin and uh, all kinds of residue that's going to be stuck to those plastic fan blades. Just helps to keep it efficient and maintain your CFM. So just a couple of final thoughts before we finish up today. It's a great idea if you've vented your machine similar to myself, you may want to leave it as a temporary connect like I do. When I'm not using the bolt and it's cold outside, I disconnect the vent from the outside outlet. That way I don't have cold air coming back into the machine. And my last tip, when you're running the machine and you finished up say that last job of the day, quite often I'll just run this out of the way to get my material off the honeycomb and then I'll shut the machine down for the night. But you probably noticed that the bolt has a memory and it remembers where the last origin was the last time you used the machine. So when you turn it on the next morning, you'll notice that as it initializes, it will send the laser head back to whatever the last origin was. And if you've got your rotary in there or something else, you stand a chance of that laser head hitting it. So what I do before I finish every night after my last job is when I throw it back into the corner, I just press origin. Then I shut it off. That way it always remembers that the origin was in the corner and the laser head won't move unexpectedly. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope it was helpful for some of you new bolt users. I've learned quite a bit, especially when it came to the mirror alignment. Had no idea that such a tiny discrepancy can create so much loss in power, but it kind of makes sense. It needs to be aligned. Have a great week. Please be kind to each other. And I hope to see you again on the next one. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.